Assalamu alaikum, we are from the students for the stage from University of Baghdad College of Pharmacy and today we're gonna talk about the bottle closing in heart failure with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction. This study was by Scott and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, September 2022. The sponsor leadership was AstraZeneca. I'm Leiba Laffer and I'll start with the background. So, heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction represent one half of our patients with heart failure and associated with substantial morbidity and mortality. There is positive evidence-based therapy that use of sodium glucose co-transporter inhibitors which was used for type 2 DM, in pagliflozin, reduced cardiovascular death and hospitalization in patients with heart failure preserved ejection fraction, and this was the result of the imperial trial. But uncertainty remains regarding efficacy in several groups, including those in the highest part of the ejection fraction range, where there has been concern about attenuation of the treatment effect. Those initiated on treatment during or soon after hospitalization, where limited data are available, and also patients who has a previously reduced ejection fraction that has improved to more than 40%, a group that has been excluded from the prior trials. Objectives Objective of this study was to evaluate the effectiveness of the bagliflozin in patients with heart failure with a preserved or moderately impaired left ventricular ejection fraction. Starting with methods. Eligibility criteria. Age of 40 years or older, may a class between two and four heart failure, left ventricular ejection fraction more than 40%, including prior left ventricular ejection fraction of 40%, or under that had improved to over 40%, which was excluded from the previous trials. So structural heart failure, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, or left atrial enlargement, and elevated natriuretic peptides, patients could be either ambulatory, hospitalized, or even recently hospitalized. Hi everyone, my name is Fatma Ammar. As a continuation to my colleague Liban, we have an patient flow. We collect data. We collect data on patients from about two different twenty countries and from three hundred fifty-three sites around the world. In this trial, we have an eligibility criteria that patients we enroll in this study need to meet. So some patients are excluded from not meeting eligibility criteria, or declined to precipitate, or died, or adverse event, or other reason. So we have deliver was a randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial testing the hypothesis that dabagliflozin will reduce the worsening of heart failure. So we have in a randomized, we have a two arm, a, and the first arm is allocated to dabagliflozin is about 3,131 patients, and the other arm is allocated to placebo 300. 3,000, sorry, 3,132. The first one that allocated to dabagliflozin, we need to consider that some patient will discontinue intervention or incomplete follow-up for primary endpoints, survival status unknown, loss to follow-up, and withdrawal consent. The same thing, the same thing is applied to the placebo one. So we have we have in this method, we have a design, so we designed this trial that to become uh, randomized, so we reduce the selection bias, and this is a study also, also double-blinded, so uh, double-blinded, this means neither the physician or the patient know which medication it will receive a placebo or dabagliflozin and it is barrel so the first group that take a placebo will continue on a placebo and the same thing for the daba this is a very important this is because it's affected the result of the study so we follow up the patient 
after giving them the placebo and the DABA for 2.3 years. So after the follow-up, we need to measure measure this intervention we we done we have done. So the primary outcome was a composite of worsening heart failure. We mean in the worsening of heart failure, we mean heart failure hospitalization or an urgent uh, visit, heart failure visit or a cardiovascular death. In the secondary outcome, the total number of worsening heart failure event and cardiovascular death and the change in the score and the symptoms for the heart failure at least for eight months, CV death, death from any cause. This is very important. And the result, we actually gonna talk about how the double glyphlozine uh, change and the result, and especially in the patients taking the double glyphlozine, were uh, six, 610 events in the placebo arm representing 9.6 per 100 patient years. And the double glyphlozine group had only five 112 events representing a rate of 7.8 per uh, 100 patient year. This gives a hazard ratio. This gives a hazard ratio of 0.82, a significant result with a p value of 0.008. The number need to treat was 32. In this slide, we uh, here we can see the pre-specified result in the subpopulation of patients have an injection of fraction less than 60, less than 60 percent. This shows that there is a virtually no difference in the ultimate result from these two groups. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm Ola Malik Habib, PharmD student at University of Baghdad College of Pharmacy. And the results of deliver they saw significant reduction in worsening heart failure alone as we see worsening heart failure including heart failure hospitalization and urgent heart failure visit and this event was higher in the placebo group with 455 events and lower in the defect life losing group with the 300 368 events also primary outcome in a pre-specified group in the highest left ejection of fraction group, there is no evidence as of attenuation. Secondary endpoint, including total heart failure events and cardiovascular death, was higher in the placebo group than in the dipagliaflozin group, with 1,057 events in the placebo group and lower event with 815 events in the dipagliaflozin group. Improvement in Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire total symptom score baseline to eight months was higher in the blood life losing group than in a placebo group, which means that the improvement in the symptom was better in the blood life losing group. For a result of adverse events and safety, adverse events including death were reported in percent of patients in the blood life losing group, which was 43.5% uh, percent and higher percent, which was 45.5% in the placebo group, and the incidence of adverse effect were similar in the two groups. For the conclusions, dapagliflozin reduced the primary composed outcome of worsening heart failure or cardiovascular death. Also, dapagliflozin was effective in those with recent heart failure hospitalization and in heart failure with improved ejection fraction. And these findings were consistent across pre-specified group, and including those defined ejection fraction according to left ventricle ejection fraction, with no attenuation in the highest ejection fraction group. And as we mentioned in the background, dapagliflozin was effective in patients with recent heart failure hospitalization and in those with period reduced ejection fraction that had improved over, to over 40% that this group of patients were excluded from the imperial trial. In the recommendation, trial in higher risk population 
are of longer duration or pooled analysis of several trials would be needed for evaluation of benefit with respect to mortality. Also, this trial has become has some limitation. The use of a specific inclusion and exclusion criteria may have limited the generalizability of our finding, and less than 5% of the patients enrolled were black. So, starting with critique. I think we need to know if there is any difference between agents within SGLT2 inhibitors class, since we had a study in Paglifluzin in inferior trials and also study the Paglifluzin, so we need to get information about efficacy of these agents, if there is any difference between their efficacy and also other agents within SGLT2 inhibitors class. We need more information about post-MI patients, patients who had recently myocardial infarction, can they get the, this class of treatments? Can they get benefit from this treatment? Also, we need information about patients who cannot use these agents for any reasons, like has uh, comorbidities, medical history, other medications, or any factor related to their patients. We need more information about mechanism of SGLT2 inhibitors in heart failure. If we get information about mechanism, we can specifically know who class of patients can get benefit from these drugs and who class may not get benefit of these agents. About my critique, we should consider the cost of the dabagliflozin because it's maybe a barrier. Uh, especially in healthcare system with limited sources, we need it for information for the long term use of the dabagliflozin, especially with the safety and the efficacy. Um, when compared to the traditional heart failure medication like ACE and beta blocker, dabagliflozin offer a unique mechanism. Uh, however, we should consider uh, the dabagliflozin as a jovent therapy rather than replacement therapy, uh, especially in patients with severe heart failure. Dabagliflozin presents a promising addition to the heart failure treatment because it is unique mechanism of action or even uh, reducing the heart failure hospitalization and the cardiovascular death. Uh, so we need to know more about the safety profile, cost, patient selection criteria must be carefully considered. So we need a further research to define it is a prices rule in the heart failure management. My critique that according to previous trials, in the absence of contraindications, of SGL2 inhibitors can be prescribed to all heart failure patients regardless of their ejection fraction. So there is no need to wait until determining the ejection fraction and prescribed indication according to it. Or by another word, it did not matter if you have high ejection fraction or low ejection fraction. SGL2 inhibitor will benefit you. Also, we saw the benefit of SGL2 inhibitor and prevention of patients with diabetes. But what about the patient without DM? Also, the benefit of the baclifluzin in patients with stabilized heart failure was improved. But what about patients who have acute heart failure? And this guideline, in including uh, update of the uh, European Society of Cardiology guideline in the uh, 2023, um, for treatment of chronic heart failure. Um, as we saw, the recommendation um, for the treatment of patients with symptomatic heart failure with mild reduced or, or preserved ejection fraction, the recommendation for use of dabagliflozin or embagliflozin uh, according to a, a delivered trial and imperial trial, uh, the, the recommendation for the use of them was a class one uh, level A. Finally, thank you for your listening.